So a while back, I was called to meet a farmer. I was told this guy is a big farmer. He stocks quite a huge number of chickens. In particular, I think it was 20,000 broilers every week. And it would have been good business for me to meet him and come to an agreement so that he can source birds from me. Of course, you do understand that I do supply chicks, broilers, layers to farmers or some chicks. So of course I jumped at the opportunity, you know, who doesn't want to supply someone? 20,000 chicks every week. So I agree, we meet this guy in a public place, you know, a restaurant, something like that. So we are sitting down, we are talking. First of all, the guy doesn't speak English. I'm like, well, English doesn't really matter. A lot of people are intelligent, a lot of people are bright, a lot of people really understand what they are doing without knowing English. I'm like, cool. So we meet, we agree on terms, we agree on you know, supplying the guy, and we're cool with it. And then a few weeks later, I get a call that the guy is having a few issues with the birds. You know, the birds are not performing well. They're a bit ill and really not doing well. I'm like, why not? Let's go check on our guy. You know, we don't want to lose this customer. Only to get to the farm, and the farm has terrible biosecurity. In fact, no biosecurity at all. So we try to go through the biosecurity, you know, try to troubleshoot, find out where the issues are. The guy is feeding the birds really terrible food, really terrible food. And after discussing with the guy and finding out details, I actually noticed that, well, he's not as bright as I thought he was. You know, when you imagine someone who is doing 20,000 chickens, you imagine that this is really a smart ass person who has really figured out what they are doing and now they are making a lot of money, they have really expanded the farm and they are crazy going into what they are doing. This guy completely didn't know what he was doing, but can I tell you something crazy? He was making money. He was making way more money than most farmers that I know about. How come such a guy who completely didn't know what he was doing was making money. You see, in all reality, I can't tell you that this guy was brilliant, yeah? He was making literally all the mistakes someone can make. And I know a lot of brilliant people, a lot of brilliant guys, a lot of guys I've worked with, a lot of people who I've studied with, and they have started farms. You know, they haven't been successful. And you know why? Because brilliance actually works against you. When you go into the world of business, into the world of farming, into the world of making money, brilliance actually works against you. You see, the way humans evolved, and not only humans, but all other animals, is that we evolved in order to survive. We evolved to survive. It wasn't about thriving, it was about survival for the fittest, yeah? If you survived, you'll be able to pass on your genes onto the next generation, and then if that generation survived, they would pass on the next genes onto the next one, yeah? If you didn't survive, you were eaten. You understand? It was about running for your life. So all the brilliance was on how do I get full? How do I make sure that I have food and I'm not hungry? How do I make sure that I'm strong enough to pass on my genes? And how do I make sure that I'm not eaten? How do I make sure that I'm escaping from other wild animals and all those kinds of things? It was all about survival. Unfortunately, or fortunately enough for us, the world has changed. Most of the people in the world right now are not struggling for survival. It's just in a few communities that you will move to and people are literally fighting for survival. Me right now and a lot of people that I do know are not fighting for survival. They're not worried that if I turn left something will come and eat me from the right. If I turn right something will come and eat me from the left. That was the constant worry very many years ago. Now of course we've changed so much in a very short time that that aspect of brilliance actually hasn't escaped from us and the survival instinct is actually working against us. Back then it was about paying more attention to the negatives than the positives. It was more important that you survive than it is important that you feed on the best food or the most nutritious food available. Survival was more important. Because of that, humans attach way more importance to things that are bad compared to things that are good. You understand? If something happened to you of equal magnitude in the negative direction, you'd feel more impacted than if something happened to you in the positive direction. Right now, I have a farm. If someone came and gave me 500 free eggs, 500 free eggs from their farm right now, I'll be happy, I'll be excited. If they ask me to rate my level of happiness, it would probably be, you know, maybe a five, a six. Well, I've got 500 extra eggs. But if my chickens stopped producing and today I lost 500 eggs today, 
Now, it's just 500 eggs. 500 eggs in the opposite direction. 500 eggs I was given, I rated my excitement or my joy as a 5 out of 10. If I lost 500 eggs right now, they would ask me to rate my disappointment and trust me, I wouldn't rate it anything less than a 9 out of 10. Same exact thing, but I rate one of a bigger magnitude because it happened in the negative direction. Why? Because of our sense of survival. We feel worse when bad things happen to us. But what that means is that we overestimate the possibility of bad things happening to us. We overestimate them. And also, we underestimate the possibility of good things happening to us. We don't think good things can happen to us, but we always consistently imagine that bad and terrible things can happen to us. Now here was this guy who the world does not consider brilliant. In all honesty, I think he's really brilliant. And of course, by the way, I talked to him to allow me to say this on the channel, yeah? Because I do consider him brilliant. But in all honesty, the world would consider him not brilliant, yeah? But in his lack of brilliance, he was willing to risk it all. He was willing to risk it all because when you risk it all, you're more likely to encounter things and stumble upon things that you didn't expect yeah now because the likelihood of us failing is actually lower than we imagined there's actually a very high possibility that good things could happen to you even when you don't know what you're doing but secondly because he doesn't really care he's not afraid of what other people will say he's not afraid whether they think he's a terrible farmer or not you who is watching this video you're probably thinking to yourself well if i fail my mother will say if this happens to me my father will say if this happens to me everyone will say he doesn't give a damn what someone will say because apparently he's not brilliant he doesn't really care and that works in his favor because that means he's more willing to take steps in a particular direction and carry out particular actions to get particular results. Now, here are the things that this guy actually maximizes to make sure that he gets some money. You know, there will always be negative things and positive things. If your positive things just outweigh the negative things, you're making money. First of all, he has maximized scale. If he's taking 20,000 chickens each and every week, even if he's only getting, you know, 50 cents of a chicken, with 20,000 chickens, that's quite an amount of money. You know, that's at least, what, $10,000 that you're making in profit simply because you're doing 20,000 chickens. So he has understood it and he has grown in scale and he doesn't really care whether, you know, some birds die for him. He's keeping $10,000 in his pocket each and every week simply by getting 50 cents off a chicken. But secondly, he has properly mastered the art of selling. I mean, when I sat down to negotiate with this guy, simply the price of him buying chicks from me, I could tell that this guy understood the whole art of negotiation. He properly understood it. Of course, I had my own level and I could pick out particular things, but this guy understood negotiation. It would have been quite easy for me if I didn't know what I was doing to even give him birds at half the price because his negotiation skills are proper. And because of that, it's quite easy for him to sell the chickens. So he mastered the art of negotiation. And number three, he just hires farms. This guy doesn't have a farm. Now that's the craziest bit of all. You know, you would imagine that a really brilliant guy would have his own farm. He's trying to maximize biosecurity because he's trying to minimize costs, you know, the costs he has to put out in terms of renting. The thing is, farming is a very capital intensive game. And if you're going to be building a farm, taking 20,000 chickens every week, you're going to probably need about 80,000 chicken capacity. Imagine the structures you're going to use and everything. So this guy just goes to guys who are tired of using their farms and will hire the farms out because probably someone has had an outbreak and something like that. They have given up on the farm maybe two, three years. The guy comes, hires the farm, uses it, goes to another place, hires another farm. So consistently, he doesn't have the cost of building a chicken house, first of all. But second of all, if a farm gets infested with a disease, he'll just close it, you know, put an end to the contract and move away. Once that flock is done, he doesn't renew the contract, move away, go on to the next one. And for him, it's not a loss because he's not worried about the next flock coming in and getting infected. It's like, whoa, that's quite crazy. Now, of course, he has his shortcuts, which are really terrible. First, he gets really good chickens, but he feeds them a really terrible feed and has terrible management in terms of like biosecurity and how the farm is run. Really, really terrible. His birds never take six weeks on the farm. They take what? Seven, eight weeks on the farm. Can you imagine? Eight weeks on the farm. But he still finds profit because his cost of production is low. Remember, for him, it's not about a huge margin. You understand? He's willing to risk it all. Now, you are actually brilliant. Yes, you're brilliant. I'm sharing this video with you because you're brilliant and you clicked on it because you believe that you're brilliant. So what can you do? What can you do to better him? 
Number one, you can actually put proper biosecurity measures on your farm to ensure that your chickens are not consistently sick. My chickens right here on the farm, I don't remember the last time they got illnesses. You understand? It's proper biosecurity that we maintain here on the farm. So if you can get that out, your margins immediately grow from 50 cents that is getting to bigger numbers because you're losing less birds. Number two, you can give the birds better feed. You understand? You can understand the formulation of feed. You can understand what good quality feed actually means to the birds so that you keep them for a less time and that means your expenses generally become low but also you get to utilize the farm a bit more because the flock only stays around for what five six weeks instead of a whole eight ten weeks number three you can build your own farm of course the risk in the end is that if you're building your own farm in case it gets infected then you're in trouble because you have nowhere else to go you understand unlike him but in the long term it cuts down on your running costs for me right now for example i don't pay any costs to rent out or have to hire a farm you understand i don't have any of those costs so those are costs that you're going to eliminate completely at the beginning it's you know capital intensive but in the long run it's what you would really want and what happens if the owner of the farm comes and tells you hey i don't want you here anymore i want to start utilizing the farm just like that you're in trouble and finally number four you can push yourself a little bit harder of course you've watched this video you understand that the bad things that you think might happen to you are actually very unlikely to happen to you because that's just how the world is yeah bad things rarely happen and we overestimate that good things actually happen quite often but we don't value them when they happen so how about you pay more attention to the positive side and push yourself a little bit further don't go too much on the cautious side push yourself a little bit further and you'll actually see that great things happen actually i've shared a video talking about this topic you know about taking risk and pushing yourself harder i believe you'll enjoy it click right here so that you check out that video don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash the notification bell catch you very soon with another video lots of love bye bye